the 20th century saw the birth of a new weapon for warfare, gas. Released in cloud form, these chemical agents drifted downwind to disable and to kill. It was in 1905 that the Japanese burned huge quantities of rags soaked in arsenic, produced clouds of poisonous fumes, which descended in a choking fog on the Russian trenches. But not till World War I did chemical warfare come of age. And then in April of 1915, the Germans released 168 tons of chlorine gas against French and Canadian troops. This powerful chemical attack, without precedent in history, caught the Allies completely by surprise. None were equipped with masks, for masks had not yet been developed. The terrifying gas clouds rolled on, and in its wake, 20,000 casualties. And of these, 5,000 died. And the attack resulted in the complete demoralization and rout of Allied forces in that sector. Had the Germans dreamed of the success of this attack, they could have smashed through to the English Channel. So this panic, resulting from lack of equipment and from ignorance, might well have resulted in a major Allied disaster. So that this situation may never occur in our own forces, we are provided with protective equipment wherever danger of gas exists. And then it is up to each individual to learn what these agents are, how they may be recognized whenever and wherever encountered, what effect each has on the human body, and in case of exposure, what should be done. First is tear gas. All agents are divided into four types, classified according to the effect on the body. Tear gas affects the eyes, makes you weep. Next classification is irritant smoke. A gas in this category is so named because it severely irritates the nose and throat. Lung irritant. Gas of this type affects nose and throat, but has its principal effect on the lungs of the victim. The last type is blister gas, the most dangerous of all. Blister gas not only affects the respiratory system, but also blisters the skin wherever the vapors or liquid touch the body. The first two of these types, tear gas and irritant smoke, are harassing agents intended to cause temporary disability. In peacetime, they are sometimes used as riot control agents. The remaining two, lung irritant and blister gas, are casualty agents. These are the principal war gases, and their purpose is to produce casualties in the ranks of the enemy. Another characteristic of war gas, which must be instantly recognized, is whether the type is of the non-persistent or persistent variety. That is, the effective lasting power of these various types of gas. How quickly the gas is dissipated into the air. Lung irritant gas dissipates very quickly. So lung irritant is non-persistent. Blister gases are liquid, and they are visible where they splash on streets and buildings. These liquids are extremely dangerous, and so are the invisible vapors which are given off until the liquid has entirely evaporated. Don't be fooled by the invisibility of these vapors. Most war gases have little or no visible cloud effect. Blister gas is highly persistent, remaining actively effective and dangerous for days, weeks, and even for months under some weather conditions. Any bomb explosion may release war gas, so get upwind. For the person upwind is safe, even though close to the point of explosion. The gas vapors cannot travel into the wind. All war gases are heavier than air and hug the ground. So except in the event of a spray attack or other unusual circumstance, a level above the third floor line or equivalent height is also safe. But a man downwind, even at considerable distance, will be affected 
by wind-borne vapors. Rule one, get upwind or get above the gas. These containers, a tear pot and a grenade, are filled with CN, tear gas. Note the single red band. A single band always indicates a non-persistent agent. The red color means that it belongs to the harassing group. Tear gas produces the scent of apple blossoms. So if your sense of smell registers this odor during a raid, it is tear gas and is not harmful until its concentration becomes great enough to cause weeping. As concentration is increased, the eyes are immediately effective, becoming bloodshot and producing tears. The unprotected person will suffer acutely, but the effects are not lasting. Remember not to rub the eyes. This will only increase the irritation. Here is another agent of the non-casualty type, Adam site, with the symbol DM. Again, the single red band indicates a non-persistent harassing agent. It is an irritant smoke thick and yellow, readily visible in concentration of any strength. If you have lived in a factory town where smokestacks pour heavy smoke into the sky, or if you have traveled on railroads, you already know the odor of DM, the familiar smell of coal smoke. But there's a great difference between DM and coal smoke. DM, Adam's sight, irritates the nose and throat and causes severe pain in the bones of the face. Immediate sneezing and headache is followed by upset stomach nausea, and vomiting. The most serious effect resulting from exposure to DM is mental. It can produce an extreme, even suicidal fit of depression. DM is not a casualty agent. However, the victim of this gas should have hospitalization if possible. The shells to right and left contain phosgene, known by the symbol CG. The single band means it is non-persistent. The green color indicates a casualty agent. It is a lung irritant, first used by the Germans at Cologne in 1915. It may be identified by an odor resembling that of green corn or of hay. CG, identified as a non-persistent casualty agent, causes coughing, choking, hurried breathing, pains in the chest. But the most serious effect is the filling of the lungs with fluid, causing drowning of the victim. The CG patient must have complete rest and hospitalization. Victims of lung irritant gas are stretcher cases. Don't let them walk. Watch out for these two, HS for mustard gas and M1 for lewisite, the most dangerous gases known to be of practical use in chemical warfare. Each is marked with two green stripes the two stripes for a persistent agent, the green color for a casualty agent. Although both belong to one type, they should be considered separately because of differences in odor and in effect. First is mustard or HS, which smells like garlic. Remember the danger of this gas is multiplied by its extreme persistence. Mustard gas, HS, is one of the blister gases. Wherever the liquid or the vapor touches the body, even through clothing and shoes, blisters will appear. These blisters in themselves are not particularly dangerous, but they open the way for serious secondary infection. Of course, the delicate tissues of the respiratory system will be affected to an even greater degree by the inhaling of these poisonous vapors. From garlic to geraniums is quite a step. Lewisite produces this odor, and it produces all the effects of mustard gas and some of its own in addition. The blisters appear as before. In addition, lewisite can produce arsenic poisoning. Long exposure will affect the liver, the kidneys, and in addition, the entire blood system of the body. 
A person exposed to either mustard or lewisite should have a hot, soapy bath or shower within five to ten minutes. If vapor or liquid can be washed off in this time, after effects will be greatly reduced. Let's take a look at some of the methods used in actually releasing these chemical warfare agents against the enemy under war conditions. Here, an HS bomb, mustard gas, is secured in a plane's bomb rack. From here on out, normal bombing procedure is followed, just as in releasing explosive bombs. HS does not produce a white cloud. This liberty is taken to better illustrate the coverage and direction of spread of gas from a bomb explosion. Another method of releasing gas from the air against entrenched troops or ships at sea is by gas strafing. The gas is released from cylinders. A persistent agent such as mustard or lewisite is employed. And wherever the liquid is deposited, a point of danger is created. This is mustard gas with a strong garlic odor. In land tactics, several types of munitions are employed. The releasing of CG, one of the lung irritant group from high pressure flasks, directed with the wind so that it will carry into the enemy's position. Lewisite, M1, a blister gas with the odor of geraniums, fired by mortar into the enemy lines. The DM candle, irritant smoke, yellow in color and with the odor of coal smoke, released to travel with the wind a dense cloud of blinding, disabling smoke. Gas grenades are employed also. Here's CN, the tear-producing gas with the scent of apple blossoms, used to smoke out an enemy foxhole or put a machine gun nest out of action. And the effect of all this well, here's a man who did not have proper protection, reduced to utter helplessness with one thought only, to get out of the gas, get into the wind. But men properly protected, who know what gas is and what it does, march fearlessly, calmly, 
through the most intense barrage. 